Wagey, it's bright and early on Monday morning, my favorite day. Um, anyway, so in this video I want to talk about uh, minimalist software, a, th a recurring theme on my channel. But a lot of people think that minimalism is a big joke, it's a big meme, it's a big purity spiral, it's a big joke that people do for no reason. Like they want to uh, use software that's hard to use just for their own, I don't know, difficulty or something. Uh, in this video I want to explain why minimalist software is more practical and it's a better long-term investment. Sometimes even if you have to make a little personal sacrifice. Now, on my channel, one thing that I've done a lot of videos on, I don't know if so many of my current viewers, or viewers have seen them, but one thing that I've done a lot of videos on is document formatting. Um, now. Uh, those of us who aren't word cucks have many different ways of producing documents. For example, uh, I, I think the industry standard, most technical papers are usually written in LaTeX or something like this or some, some other kind of tech variety, um, which is pretty bloated compared to different things. I mean, it's much bloated than, more bloated than plain text, but that's not really an option. Um, but many of you may often know that I've actually done a recent series on Groth which is a much more traditional, much more minimalist way of doc, uh, formatting documents. Um, now, it, it is light years faster, light, yeah, light years faster, you know what I mean. It is significantly faster, um, it is much more extensible, but it also doesn't do as much as LaTeX. Um, but there's even more stuff. Um, so LaTeX is all over the place nowadays, but there's new stuff like uh, Pandoc, and, uh, well, not, not so new, but there, or there's stuff like people want to, because LaTeX syntax is so bad, despite it being powerful, they want to be able to write, they design extra layers of software to go on top of it. For example, so you can write in Markdown. So I've done some videos on R Markdown and uh, videos on Pandoc, where you can write documents in Markdown and use, a, a, you know, a either Pandoc or using some kind of LaTeX engine to convert them to PDFs. Now, th I'll go ahead and say that uh, this is not minimalist. I know a lot of people think that, oh, it's using Markdown, so it's minimalist, but that's not what minimalist is referring to. Markdown is simple. I think it's pretty much the simplest markup language out there, uh, all things considered. But when you write something in Markdown and convert it to a PDF, Usually what's happening is you are writing it and you are using LaTeX, you are using some other kind of uh, document formatting service, which is incredibly huge. I mean, if you install Pandoc, that's nearly a gigabyte of dependencies. It's insane. LaTeX is pretty much the same way if you want to do anything fancy. Or if you're doing something, something like R Markdown, you have to have all of that junk, including R. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just enormous. Now... Um, for many users, I think, they think of uh, Markdown or R -mar Markdown as being easier because you can just write, you can just write in uh, Markdown and proceed from there. But the, the fact of the matter is, what you're doing when you're using these services is that you are adding more and more and more layers of software that are just infinitely deep uh, to do more basic things that if you know, you might not like the syntax of a minimalist document formatter like Groth, which really is probably better than LaTeX anyway in terms of the syntax, but you might not necessarily like Groth, but the thing about Groth is that um, documents format instantly, even if you have complex bibliographies and references and stuff like that, um, because it, you know, it's sort of a Unix-based, everything is a little tool or whatever that, uh, that functions together. Um, so why I say this, um, this isn't just an issue of speed, it's an issue of actually getting things done. Let me provide you an example. Uh, recently, a couple months ago, I was writing a book, uh, j you know, just uh, uh, writing a book specifically in R Markdown, which of course is going to be compiled uh, with a variety of LaTeX uh, when you actually compile it. Um, so I was writing a book in R Markdown, and there was a point where I needed to insert an emoji character. Now, here's the funny thing. It's not very difficult to get an emoji in our markdown, okay? It's also not very difficult to get a an emoji in a LaTeX book. That Neither of those things are difficult. But uh, to get an emoji in a LaTeX book being compiled with our markdown, which is really just, I mean, it's nothing fancier than the other two things, at the time was absolutely impossible. Now, it might have changed, 
But what happens is when you have all these different layers of software, there is a particular, due to the way that R Markdown calls these LaTeX packages, there is an incompatibility that uh, uh, I would either have to manually change packages to do or really just sit there and not being a be able to do anything. Um, so what happens when you add these extra layers of software is that things that you're supposed to be able to do, you can't do anymore. Um, or, and it's not just, you, there's no way of doing it, they're unfixable to either an indie user or someone who n might know a whole lot about it. Uh, you know, you basically have to wait for someone else to fix it. Now compare that, compare that to Groth. In Groth, I also cannot insert emojis. I don't know how to do it. I, I think, I think actually it's a postscript problem. I think if I compiled to some other kind of uh, like HTML, it might be easier. Um, but I, I don't know how to insert emojis in Groff. I'll just put it that way. Um, but I feel better about Groff because I can't insert emojis in Groff because the feature isn't there. Okay. If I really wanted to add that feature, I could do my research. I could make something and add it in. Okay. But when it comes to bloated software, where you have all of these different, you know, these substrates of software on top of each other, uh, constantly interacting in unexpected ways, unexpected by you and unexpected even by the people who either wrote them or put them together, what you have is you have errors that you can't fix and there's nothing really you can do about them. And so what happens with something like, um, has happened with something like R Markdown is it's really nice, uh, you know, it's nice writing something in Markdown and compiling it into a LaTeX document, you know, theoretically, if you don't mind the, the extra time it takes up. Um, but as soon as you want to do something a little different than just writing text, it becomes, it, I mean, even something like just inserting a Unicode character, it can become incredibly difficult and incredibly annoying in particular, in very specific use cases. So of course, this isn't about emojis. This isn't a bit about R Markdown. This isn't about LaTeX. This is about the fact that nowadays people have this software philosophy where if they want to add something to our collective, you know, software repository, so to speak, they want to write stuff on top of old stuff. So they, they're going to take the, the engines that already exist and build more engines on top of them. When in reality, what I, I, there might be something like this out here, but out there. But one thing I'd like to see is, since people love Markdown so much, uh, if someone just wrote a uh, Markdown to PDF converter or uh, PostScript converter or something like that, that just automate not using LaTeX, not using Pandoc, not using you know any of these um, uh, you know megabytes and megabytes or sometimes gigabytes of. Uh, dependencies. If you just wrote a converter to th that turned X into Y, that would be nice. But nowadays, what you do is you convert X into A to B to G to Z all the way to Y. And that's supposed to be like smart. And it's smart if you say something like, oh, I wrote a system that, uh, you know, oh, I wrote a system that compiles Markdown through Pandoc and through LaTeX, through Sail LaTeX, through all these other things in to get a P PDF. That sounds smart, but it's stupid. It's really stupid. <laughs> And this is the problem with bloated software. It's going to break, and it's going to break in crazy, unexpected ways. So anyway, hopefully this has been sort of an explanation of the problem that I see in bloated software. And when I started moving the things that were more minimalist, um, sure, sometimes it's just for the memes. Sometimes you want to, uh, you know, you just want to see, oh, can I, min can I actually get rid of this dependency? Can I actually live without this program? But you realize at the, you know, when you get to the end of it, Things are much easier if you just specifically choose to use simple things. Um, another thing that uh, I, I think I did a video on around a year ago on is um, uh, using Scent, uh, one of the suckless tools, to do presentations. Uh, so if this is a really nice tool, it's supposed to be the equivalent of something like uh, a slideshow manager, you know, like PowerPoint or something like this, where literally all you do is you write your, te you have a plain text file where every paragraph is gonna be compiled as a slide. And everything appears pretty much exactly as you type it, including spaces and everything else. And I found it nice, not just because it's simple or because it's small or the file sizes are small or the, you can just use any kind of text you want, but also because it gets rid of the stuff you don't really need. Um, you don't need flashing 
transitions and stuff in your slideshows. Sometimes, you know, some, sometimes not having features, that's a good thing. <laughs> and, and that's something you, you get, you get focused on all these silly features when it'd be nicer, it, it would be much nicer just to have programs that do a couple things and nothing else and you can predict how they're gonna interact. So anyway, that's all I wanna say. Uh, this might be a little more of an autistic Boomer Ranson Woods video, but uh, that's about it for today. So I will see you guys next time.